please watch this video all the way through. Also, pause every now and then as you need. First, we're gonna do a clear wash. Take your sponge brush and clear water and just put a thin layer all over your canvas. Then you're gonna get a little bit of blue just on the tip of your sponge brush and you're gonna go across. I start to outline and then I think I just go, yeah, there I go. I'm gonna just do the whole thing. Then I'm gonna take that paper towel when I'm all done and I'm gonna scrunch it up. And then I'm gonna start blotting the areas that I didn't want that blue paint. It's okay if there's a little bit of blue paint in there because that's just gonna make it look like your own painting. But I go and I dab and I dab. I try to get in the nooks and crannies as I can. But like I said, if there's a little blue on the llama, that's okay too. Keep doing that until you get it the way you want it. Do remember, you wanna do this pretty quickly. If that paint dries, then it's gonna be a lot harder to get it off of there. So put your wash on, don't fuss with your wash, and then dab that blue off of the llama. So if you do take a little bit off the background, you can take your sponge brush with a little bit of water. You probably don't need to put any more paint on there and dab back into that area that you took off. And some of that paint will bleed over there. Now you want this background dry before you go on. Uh, you can just get a blow dryer and dry it off. It's always really nice and handy to have around. I've got a heat gun. If you have a heat gun, one, don't let your kids use it. Two, don't get too close to the canvas. It can burn your paint. I'm gonna start off with straight yellow and go right into that sun. Now don't put too much paint on your brush at any time when you're painting. You'll get ridges on the edge edges of your painting that you're not gonna like. Unless you want those ridges there for a reason. Sometimes I do want them there for a reason. Now also remember, besides not putting too much paint on your brush, most of this probably will need at least two coats. Some colors even need three coats. Really depends on what the color is. Since I have that yellow on my brush, I'm gonna go ahead and paint his muzzle and then the insides of the flowers. Now, after that muzzle dries and those bottom flowers, you can go ahead and get some pink. We're gonna start with her nose. Cute little heart-shaped nose. We're gonna make it all pink. Never be afraid to grab your blow dryer and dry off an area of paint. That way you don't get it in your hands when you move on to the next. We're gonna move on into our hair and we're gonna get all of her hair pink too. You can go ahead and use that small brush and you can tip it on its side. See how I'm tipping it sideways there? So I'm just using the edge to get in. I'm just using the very tip to get into some of those smaller spaces. Now, if this is the smallest brush that you have in your kit. If you feel like you need a smaller brush and you have one at home, go ahead and switch to that. But my rule of thumb is always use the biggest brush that you can. You'll be much happier with your picture. You can get into those areas and it's kind of better to start learning to use a little bit bigger brush. If you try to do big areas with a really, really small brush, you're gonna get a bunch of paint brush strokes that you probably won't want. This paint goes on pretty thin, so you're gonna have some really streaky strokes here. Don't worry about that. You're gonna need one or two more coats to get a full coverage with this. You always wanna put on thin layers of paint let them dry thoroughly and then put another coat on. 
if you try to put too much paint on this, you're actually just gonna be taking paint off. You're gonna get really frustrated. So one coat at a time, make them thin, let them dry. Now I have that nose and hair pretty much well covered. So that means I let it dry and I put more layers on it like I just got done saying. That's not just one coat that you see there. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my blue and I'm gonna use that same brush and I'm gonna go in there really delicately. You're gonna use the edges of your brush, the tip of the edges of your brush. Just be real careful as you go. Do know that, you know, on the inside where that black pupil is, if you mess that up a little bit, we're going over with that with black. So that won't matter as much. But on the other side where it's gonna to be touching the white, do be a little bit more careful on that side. This also would be a good time to remind you to turn your painting. Whether you're left-handed or right-handed, everybody is more comfortable painting in a certain direction. So you turn that painting the way you need to so it's comfortable for you. Also, that's why you should be drying in between coats. It's just going to help you save a headache, dry it, and then you'll be able to rest your hand on it. Make sure that brush is nice and clean and we're going to go back to the yellow. Of course, that pink is dry now, so it'll be okay to get right up there close. We're just doing the insides of the ears with the yellow. Pretty simple. Once you have both ears done, we're gonna make a purple wash. So I have a whole bunch of water down there and I put a tiny bit of purple in it and I make sure that it's mixed up really, really good. And I go ahead and I just do a whole wash all over the face. If you get into her eyebrows a little bit or eyelashes, that's gonna be okay. Those are gonna be black. You don't wanna get any of the purple into the whites of her eyes. And of course you really don't want purple on that pink nose or that yellow muzzle. worry too much about your brush strokes this is going to kind of all blend together and come out somewhat smooth if you want make your brush brush strokes you know that way around the cheek and down between the eyes the way you would think like the fur would go but pretty much this is going to even itself out <laughs> I'm gonna do the neck and the outside of the ears with just the straight purple. Use that small brush again, and you can get into those tiny little areas around the flower much easier. Also, just know we're gonna be taking a Sharpie and outlining everything. So if you have some like not so smooth edges around things, that Sharpie is going to take care of it for you. You're going to be going right over that. So it'll be fine if it's not perfect. Mine was definitely not perfect. Now we're gonna work on those long, luscious eyelashes. Now, I use the black paint to do this. If that intimidates you, if you feel like those little loops at the end are too much with that big that brush that you have, you can use that Sharpie marker and do all of the eyebrows in the Sharpie marker. I do want you to make sure that all of the paint anywhere that it would touch is dry because you'll ruin your Sharpie if your paint is wet, wet. But you can also do it in the paint. It looks really good and I think you can do it. I 
I did say her pupil was going to be black, but I've decided to make a dark bluish gray, but it's going to be almost black. So if you got any blue in there, don't worry about it. it this will cover it. I did basically one part black and one part blue. Looks like I put another part black in there. So as dark as you want it, I have a pretty dark gray. And then I'm going to just do the pupils of the eyeballs. Don't worry a whole lot. Remember, we are going to go around it in our Sharpie. So you have to be careful, but you don't have to make it perfect. Now that I have both pupils done, I'm going to go back into the neck and the outside of the ears and get another coat of purple or two coats on those. By now the purple on your face is definitely dry. I'm going to make some beauty marks on her face. You don't need to do this part or you can put them in different places. It's completely up to you. Maybe you would like some cute little freckles on her face too. I just use the end of my paintbrush and I dab it. Then I make it perpendicular to my canvas right straight up and down and make a perfect little circle. When I do the bigger circles, I might go around just a little bit, almost like it's a marker, and I'm making a circle with that. Step back and take a look at your painting. Do you have it all done as far as all of the coats on it? If you have it like all done and you're happy with it, now we're going to go into the white and we're going to do some highlighting. Now, there's not a lot of rhyme or reason of where I highlight, but I do often highlight on a curved edge. You can think about where your sun is and where the sun would be shining, but really, I don't necessarily have a rhyme or reason. Go ahead and watch me and you can just put your highlights where I put mine. This is a good time to remind you about turning your canvas. It's a lot easier to make a curved line in the direction that's more comfortable for you. Can't say one direction or the other because it depends on if you're left-handed or right-handed. Everybody has their own comfort zone. So turn it however intuitively is comfortable for you. Now we need to address the edges of the canvas. You probably do have a little bit of blue on there, but I want you to grab your sponge brush and that pink paint, or if you want the edges a different color, you can always paint them a different color. I take my sponge brush and I go make a line across the canvas up at the top, and then I brush it down. So all the way around all four corners. If you didn't already love your painting, after this step, you're really going to love it. We're going to take that Sharpie marker. Remember, everything has to be dry. And I mean dry, dry. No damp paint. You'll ruin your marker. We're just going to go around all of the edges. One tip with outlining look where you're going not where you're at i know that seems strange but you really want to follow where you're going it'll make it so you don't have as jaggedy a lines you also want to make a confident line mark make your stroke confident go all the way through until the end if you do little dabs it's harder and you're going to have a whole lot more jaggedy line 
Now, that doesn't mean get in some weird position and make it go all right way around. You saw that I stopped there at her chin. It seemed like a good natural place to stop then in the middle of the curve of the cheek. I'm gonna go around the eyeballs and or even around those pupils I go around. I have just about all of my outlining done. You might want to stop the video here and get your outlining done. That way you can see what she looks like. Now we need that sponge brush again. Make sure it's dry. We're going to put the black accents around the edges of the canvas. So my first one starts at the right corner and the stripe is just the width of my sponge brush. Then I take my sponge brush and move it over and I get that length of that width and I leave that area pink I eyeball the end I scooch it over and I do another stroke down I continue that all the way around the canvas 